Hello friends, welcome back to Merstack. In today's session, we are going to talk about how to evaluate database script dynamically. Okay. So uh, I was having one use case or requirement in my uh, project. So let me explain that in, in, in other words. So uh, for example, assume that we have one consumer and three clients. Okay. All the clients are sending data in different formats. Let's say XML, JSON, CSV, etc. But your consumer is expecting a data in one format, let's say a JSON. Okay. In such cases, what you'll do, uh, if you follow the normal approach, as usual, we'll, we'll create three flows and transform the input message to a JSON. Okay. And if you see this normal approach, it's time consuming. Okay. So you're creating three flows. You have to handle the error separately. If whenever there is an issue uh, or uh, if you're fixing anything in the data, we got anywhere, you need to redeploy entire application after testing and modifying the code. So, uh, so here to avoid this uh, normal approach, uh, we'll be checking whether is there any component who can do this kind of job for me, uh, you know, dynamically, uh, you know, uh, executing scripts, okay, during runtime. So yes, so there is a component called dynamic evaluate uh, provided by uh, MuleSoft. We can take help of that component and we can execute our scripts dynamically uh, during runtime. How to achieve that, let's say, uh, so what we need to do, uh, I mean, if you, if you want to pass these scripts dynamically, definitely, I mean, you need to keep those scripts somewhere in the database or somewhere uh, in the Amazon AWS or somewhere. Okay. So means this component needs uh, uh, scripts dynamically during runtime. So some, somebody has to provide it. Okay. So now what, to, uh, how, I mean, how uh, this approach can minimize our development time and dependencies we'll see uh, via our use case. So I'll, I'll show you here. Okay. In the flow. So before that, let's, let's uh, form a use case first. So what I'll do is I'll take two clients. Okay. Or two applications. Okay. So we'll be receiving requests from two applications. Okay. Say, uh, let's say, uh, I'll give some meaningful name, uh, sales, Salesforce application and let's say mule sort application. There are some don't uh, map this uh, with as, as, as it is. Okay. <clears throat> so I have two applications. Those applications are sending a request, uh, in uh, let's say uh, Salesforce is sending request in JSON format and MuleSoft uh, request uh, will be coming in XML format. Okay, so that is fixed. So we have two applications. We are getting data in two formats. Okay, that is fixed. Okay, now based on the source. Okay, based on the source, uh, let's say it's a, uh, Salesforce or MuleSoft. We we need to decide how to transform it. Okay, so for example, Salesforce is sending uh, data in JSON format. I want to convert into XML and then send back to Salesforce. Okay. And when, when I'm getting data from the MuleSoft, I'll be getting data in the XML format. I want to convert into JSON format and then send it to MuleSoft. Okay. So actual MuleSoft and actual uh, uh, Salesforce. Okay. The application names are uh, different. Okay. Now applications names are, I gave MuleSoft and Salesforce, but I'm sending data to actual Salesforce and then actual MuleSoft. Okay. So MuleSoft has some database, let's say. Okay, so that is a use case. Uh, let's see uh, how this, uh, you know, uh, this dynamic evaluate component help us. So, uh, as I said, this dynamic evaluate component, uh, you know, executes the script dynamically. Okay, and actually read the scripts dynamically and then execute the script dynamically. Two, two, two step uh, process. Okay, so what I did is uh, I have created two data view scripts, one for MuleSoft. Okay, so I'll be getting data in XML format. So I'm converting it to JSON. And for J Salesforce applications, I have created one more script, which is I'll be getting data in JSON format and I'm converting it to XML. What I did is I uh, kept these two uh, database script on my AWS account uh, S3 bucket. So I have just uploaded these two here. Okay, so that is the first step. We need to create database script uh, and externalize it. So I have uploaded to AWS. Okay. Now, second step, what I'm doing is if you go to flow back. Okay. So I have, what I'm doing is, so when I, whenever I'm getting a request, I'll be getting a request in, sorry, it will be a, a, a post. Okay. So I'm getting post request. 
Okay, so and the, in the request, I'll let me show you how it will be. So I'll be getting a source system name and the data. Okay, so let me go back to the flow again quickly. So once I get the source system, so that source system name I'll be I'll be storing in the source system variable. Okay, from the query parameters, and then that with the same name I have a script uploaded to the uh, AWS. So I'm connecting to AWS. Okay, so uh, you can configure your AWS here. Okay, and then if you see, this is my bucket name. So that is exactly same I have here. If you see, so this is my bucket name. Okay, and then what I'm doing here is, if you see key, so key key is coming as a that variable name. Okay, so variable it will be a MuleSoft or Salesforce. So MuleSoft dot DWL. I'll be fetching it from the uh, AWS. And then if you see my dynamic evaluate component, what I'm doing here is, so I'm passing that script. So if you see this component, what I'm doing is in the target variable, go to advance, go down. Here I am, you know, catching that data view script. So I don't want to change the payload. So I'm catching that script there. So from the var start data view script, I am passing it to the the dynamic evaluate component. So what it will do during runtime, this guy will get the script. Okay, so that when uh, so after executing that, I am sending based on the source system. I will be sending that data whether it's a, a Salesforce or Microsoft. I just use a logger. Okay, and if nothing match, it will raise the error. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I already ran this process. Okay, and uh, let's see how it works. So let me recap. So we'll be getting data from the post request and the query parameter source system. Based on the source system, I'll be pulling that script, data view script, and then I'm passing that data view script to this dynamic evaluate component. And how this dynamic dynamic evaluate component does is it reads dynamically, executes dynamically that script. Okay. And this code is the then you can write your own code here after that. Okay. So I'm running it. So I have already shown this request. Okay, so this is a data view uh, for MuleSoft to be converting to JSON. So, and for Salesforce, it will be converting to XML. Okay, so I have already ran the process. So now let's see. So for Salesforce source system, I'm passing the uh, JSON uh, request. So some random request. Okay, uh, it's not related to any uh, data. It's uh, just a fake data. Okay. And then what it will do, it will pull the, let me show you the result first. So now it's CC, it's converted into XML. Okay, so what it does behind the scene, it uh, it connects to the, so uh, it, uh, here we received the source system name Salesforce. Okay, and uh, if you see here, uh, I have converted into a lower. Okay, and then here, I just said that Salesforce dot DW give me from this bucket. Okay, I got the script in the target variable, and this target variable I used it here to execute. Okay, so that script executed on the input payload. That's the reason I have collected that uh, script in the target variable because I don't want to change my input payload. So on the input payload, this script, if you see the uh, configuration of the dynamic evaluate. So he, this is the script executed on this, uh, let's say, so incoming payload. Okay. So on incoming payload, this script was executed behind the scene. And then if you see the logs, let me show you the logs here. So it went to the, see here, sending logs to Salesforce. Okay. So let me change the, uh, the uh, source system now. Okay. Let me go and change it to a MuleSoft, okay? And MuleSoft, it's sending me the request in the XML format and it will get converted into a JSON. Let me execute this, okay? So if you see here, it executed in the JSON format. Same process flow, we are using it. We are just changing the request dynamically and uh, same uh, endpoint we're hitting with the query parameter equal to uh, based on your client value. Okay. And if you see uh, this, this got uh, converted into uh, in the, uh, the JSON format. 
now what we'll do is we'll try to change the script we are not redeploying it okay so i'll 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 try to change the uh, salesforce data view script and we'll upload it to aws so let me uh, delete one line uh, one let's say or tag it from here okay and then we'll save this one and what we'll do is we'll upload this to our aws bucket so let me upload add file and we have uh, changed i think the salesforce one i'll upload it okay upload it's uploaded let's so i have not done i have not redeployed my code let's go directly and hit the salesforce request okay salesforce so here there should not be a eh tag now okay so let me go and you see here now xml doesn't have that tag okay so what we have achieved here is without redeploying we are changing the data view script okay that is what we have achieved and that is that we are achieve because this dynamic evaluate component uh, executes scripts um, dynamically actually reads the script dynamically from from the aws and then executes it so that's that's what we are we are achieving here okay so yeah i hope this is useful in uh, in any of your project because we we see this kind of uh, uh, requirements uh, and um, uh, you know uh, uh, here if you see we are we are saving development time and if you if you want to handle a, a error here you need to handle it at one place only and we don't need to uh, redeploy the code uh, even if you change the data view script okay thank you uh, please uh, hit the like button uh, share with the friends subscribe the channel and see you in the next video thank you bye bye